We expect the worst to happen. And the curfew notice were posted on the telephone pole. And then after that, about a week or so, the notice for the evacuation. I didn't think that the government would go as far as to include American citizens to be interned without a hearing. And, and then later on, they changed my draft card to 4C, which is enemy alien. In those days, if you're an Asian, people automatically think you don't belong in this country. You're not an American. And, and, and I thought that was wrong. After I was arrested, and I went there and I lied on the cot and I said, gee, jail was a lot better than this. In 1942, an ordinary American took an extraordinary stand. Fred Korematsu boldly opposed the forced internment of Japanese Americans during World War II. After being convicted for failing to report for relocation, Mr. Korematsu took his case all the way to the Supreme Court. The high court ruled against him. Fred Korematsu's case represented the trial that Japanese Americans never had. This was an entire population that without evidence, without trial, without due process of any kind, were simply swept into uh, internment camps, um, many losing their property, um, some even losing their lives. The real significance of Fred's case is that it raised, for the first time, the central issue. Was the internment itself constitutional? It was, I think for him, a personal shock of recognition. Who am I? Am I an American? What does it mean for me to be an American? If you look at a Fred Korematsu, you see a very ordinary man uh, who just wanted to be left alone, but who defied the United States government because he knew it was wrong. Some names of ordinary citizens stand for millions of souls. Plessy, Brown, Parks. To that distinguished list, today we add the name of Fred Korematsu.